signs a simple mission statement and that's what it's designed to be. And, and we are concentrating on the mines that most impact on the communities. The mines that, if they're not removed, people will tread on them or they're stopping people going back and farming that land or, or rebuilding their houses and schools. With over 7,000 D-miners at work in 10 different countries, the Halo Trust is the world's largest D-mining organization. Halo's biggest program is in Afghanistan, where there are more than 3,000 D-miners. Angola and Cambodia both have over 1,000 D-miners. Halo also has programs in Mozambique and in Somaliland. In the Caucasus, Halo is working in Nagorno-Karabakh and Abkhazia on the Black Sea. In the Balkans, they are in Kosovo. They are also operating in Sri Lanka. And in recent years, HALO's parallel weapons and ammunition disposal programs have been running in Angola, Afghanistan, and Cambodia. Today, these expanding programs are helping HALO's mission to destroy the debris of war in post-conflict countries. Halo's manual deminers provide the backbone of most clearance programs and are trained to work in extremely difficult conditions. Many Halo clearance areas have hundreds of deminers at work. Increasingly, manual mine clearance is supported by Halo's mechanical programs, with a growing fleet of adapted machinery helping to speed up the process. These mechanical assets are invaluable in areas where manual deminers are slowed down by thick vegetation, compacted rocky soil, collapsed buildings and trenches, or excessive metal contamination from fighting. Most halo mechanical units are not specially built. The majority are adapted from civil engineering or agricultural machinery in Halo's own field workshops. This commitment to cost-effective practice is central to HALO's entire program. In all of HALO's work, transparent, audited deployment of resources is crucial for accurate, properly costed and effective operations in removing the debris of war. HALO surveys are only conducted by senior HALO staff with mine clearance experience. During mine clearance operations, every item found and destroyed is carefully recorded, as are the hectares of land which have been successfully cleared. Accountability is key. Mine clearance can be expensive, and in Halo's case, with a 7,000 employees, our wage bill every month does seem very, very high. But once the program is up and running, it's a fairly measurable and predictable cost for each demining team. Each team is funded by a separate donor, so it's easy to track donor costs year on year and see where savings can be made the following year or where resources need to be increased. Finance officers from HALO's headquarters in Scotland travel to each country and internally audit all accounts, whilst regional desk officers spend one third of their time in the field. HALO believes all management staff should be in direct and regular contact with field operations. HALO's research and development program allows new mine clearance technology and practices to be evaluated in the field. New technology includes the latest American mine detector, which uses ground-penetrating radar to not only detect metal in the ground, 
but also the shape of mines under the surface. Instead of a D-miner working over perhaps 5, 10, 25 square metres a day, the D-miner with, with one of these detectors can clear 100 metres a day. If we can get more of these detectors deployed in the field, we could reduce the years of mine clearance down from what might be four more years' work down to perhaps only two more years' work. To date, over one million landmines and 5,000 minefields have been cleared. Through the expanding weapons and ammunition disposal programs, HALO has now destroyed over 75,000 weapons. And over 50 million bullets. In total, HALO has destroyed over 10 million items of unexploded ordnance and is now adding another million items to that figure each year. Meanwhile, HALO's mine risk education teams are working to warn communities, and particularly children, of the dangers of minefields and unexploded ordnance. Whilst HALO places great emphasis upon educating those forced to live amongst the debris of war, it believes the only sure way of avoiding future casualties is through the deployment of its demining teams. If the demining can continue at its present rates, we are very nearly there in Abkhazia, Georgia on the Black Sea. In the next two years, we should have finished. Kosovo could be mine impact free in the next four years. Kosovo is a very good example of a country which is close to being finished, but won't be finished if people withdraw the funding on it too early. Mozambique is definitely a success story. It's taken some 12 years in northern Mozambique to finish mine clearing, and we've been around thousands and thousands of communities that were affected by mines. They are not impacted any longer. Some of the other agencies have moved away from Mozambique. The, the donor funds have been reduced for those agencies, and we're now under pressure to work in the south of Mozambique. The countries that have still got a huge amount of work, Angola, Cambodia, Afghanistan, it's another 10 years, for sure. If possible, we should have another 1,000 d in Afghanistan. And we should also be expanding in Angola. I also recently came back from the Gorno Karabakh and I visited all of Halo Trust sites and found eight or nine D-miners working on each site. And again, I was slightly saddened because really each site should have had 28 or 29 D-miners. But Nagorno Karabakh is a country very hard to raise money for. To secure the future expansion of its programs, both in mine clearance and weapons and ammunition disposal, HALO remains dependent upon the generosity of its donors. The ultimate goal for HALO Trust must be we should see a world where, where people are not treading on landmines and see a world where people are able to drive down roads where they are not driving onto an anti-tank. <laughs>